So let's move on to how to prevent heart disease. Now heart disease is the number one killer in the United States. More people die of heart disease than any other condition. This is your heart. This big pipe here, that's the aorta. And these are the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries feed the heart muscle. Now, when was the last time your heart had a vacation? It never, it doesn't rest. It rests in between beats. So the heart needs a steady, good supply of oxygen and of nutrients. And that's exactly what the coronary arteries do. Now that's a picture of a heart having a heart attack. There's a little block here in the left anterior descending coronary artery which is less than a quarter of an inch thick. If you get a blockage in the left anterior descending ar coronary artery and you don't get to an emergency room in 30 or 40 minutes for them to angioplasty or thin the blood and break up that clot, you're gone. And if you happen to survive, your heart is never the same. That is less than a quarter of an inch and the best way to plug that up is Big Macs, cigarettes, and stress. That's the cement in the glue. So we're going to talk about how not to get a blockage in one of your heart's arteries uh, so your heart works perfectly well as long as you need it to. So again, just a few statistics. This shows the relationship in heart attack risk, um, at actually uh, heart attack rates, of people who are HIV positive versus people who are HIV negative. And if you look at the decade from 65 to 75, the red bar shows that if you're positive, people are having more than three times the amount of heart attacks if they're HIV positive than their negative um, cohort. Their, you know, their negative controls. So that's over triple the number. That's not a prediction. This is happening. Okay? These are actual rates. Let's go a decade earlier. 55 to 65, you don't want a heart attack when you're 55. Um, over double the number of people are having heart attacks if they're positive than if they're negative. Go down one more decade, 45 to 55, almost three times the rate of heart attacks if you're positive. This is a wave that's trying to come up and crash and we need to get out of the way. So what are the, what are the factors that contribute to this increased rate of heart disease? Um, one of those factors is protease inhibitor use. Studies have shown that the longer a person's on protease inhibitors, the heart attack risk goes up in a straight line. Now, this was published in 2007. Some of the newer protease inhibitors don't raise cholesterol as much because this is primarily due to the effect of it raising cholesterol. That's a side effect of protease inhibitors. So that's one of the things that contributes to the increased risk. But you know what the most important risk factor for whether or not a person's heading for an early heart attack is, if you're positive? I'll tell you. It's your most recent CD4 count. The lower your CD4 count, the more likely you're going to have an early heart attack. And that is a... Um, that is a risk, that is a way of predicting it that even trumps smoking and high blood pressure and things like that. So the goal is really to get your CD4 count, one of the goals, to get your CD4 count back up into the normal range. And that means over 500. Okay, that needs to be our next goal. Our first goal was get the virus out of the way undetectable. Our next goal needs to be to get the CD4 count up to or over 500. So if you're taking meds and if your uh, viral load is undetectable, 
How do you get that CD4 count that might be stuck at 325 or 350, how do you get that up over 500? And there are drug companies that are currently working on this, trying to come up with an immune booster that enhances the CD4 count rise of antiviral meds. But there, to date, has been only one treatment which has been shown to increase the CD4 count above and beyond that that occurs with antiviral meds, and that's k immune support formula. This combination of micronutrients, it, it, pharmaceutical dosages, alpha lipoic acid, acetyl L-carnitine, and acetylcysteine, uh, when given with a high potency multivitamin and multimineral with additional antioxidants, this treatment was shown to increase the CD4 count by 24% above and beyond the drugs in 12 weeks. Um, the placebo group, which just took their drugs, had no change in their CD4 count. They were a plateau, they were a flat line. But the group that took k immune support formula steadily every month went up by 24%. And the results of this study were published in the Journal of AIDS in 2006. And since that time, for the past five years, I've been working as hard as I could to let the powers, the powers that be make them aware that we have something that's safe and natural and a fraction of the cost of drugs that could do this. But interestingly, when this study came out, the, the studies before this that show that you get to a normal projected lifespan when you get over 500, those studies hadn't been done yet. So now we have even more evidence that boosting your CD4 count above and beyond what the drugs are doing is a very good idea if you want to prevent heart disease and you want to prevent cancer. If your doctor says your blood pressure is high, get it treated. That is a very uh, easy way to lower your heart attack risk. There's dozens of medications and one pill a day, no side effects. Treating hypertension is an easy way to lower your heart attack risk. Keep your cholesterol low, under 200. That should be everyone's goal. If you've had a heart attack before, even lower, under 180. Okay, I, kn I know the last one is get your CD4 count up higher. Who can help me with what, what's the fourth one? What was that? Reduce stress. Reduce stress. That's not what I wrote down, but that's an excellent contribution. All right, let's see. 